Hey fam, and welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So today I'm going to talk about a more somber subject, which is emotional abuse. So one of you lovelies out there asked me to address this subject. And whenever you guys ask me a question, more than likely I will turn it into a series. And this one is no different. So this week I will have three videos to address. Today I will define what emotional abuse is and the 10 signs that possibly you could be in an emotional abusive relationship. Tomorrow I will talk about the long-term effects of staying in an abusive relationship and then Friday I will talk about overcoming emotional abusive relationships. All right so we're going to go ahead and jump in right after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming on back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So I'm going to read to you what I found that I thought was a pretty good definition of emotional abuse. Sometimes people wonder whether abuse is the right term to describe any relationship difficulties they're going through. They may feel like their partner shouts at them a lot or makes them feel bad, but to think abuse would be too dramatic of a word to, to use for their relationship. But the point about whether the a behavior is it really depends on how it makes you feel not others around you but you if your partner's behavior makes you feel small controlled or as if you're unable to talk about what's wrong it's abusive if you feel like your partner is stopping you from being able to express anything then it's abusive if you feel you have to change your actions in order to accommodate your partner's behavior it's abusive so I thought that that was a really great definition to express what emotional abuse is. I'm going to move on to the 10 tips to see if you are actually in an emotional abusive relationship. All right. So the first one is withholding affection. Like, you know how you guys are always lovey-dovey when things are good. And then when things start to get bad or if the person gets pissed off, they're feeling like a, they need to have a childish moment or three. They start to withhold the affection, knowing good and doggone well that that is part of the way that you'd like to be held and um, expressing the love towards you. So they withhold it on purpose to make you feel bad, to make you feel sad, to make you feel lonely. The second thing that they might do is give you ultimatums. Now, ultimatums is something like, OK, if you don't stop dealing with that friend, then I'm going to do X, Y and Z. Or, you know what? I'm sick and tired of going through X, Y, and Z. We're going to break up tomorrow. Or we're breaking up today, right? Well, most people don't say tomorrow, right? <laughs> but we're breaking up today. Like, there are always some ultimatums that's thrown in there to get you to start feeling insecure, not only about yourself, but also about the relationship. Like, okay, what's actually going on here? A lot of things that we don't think about when it comes to being in an abusive relationship. We don't necessarily think about emotional abuse because we can't physically see what it's doing to us. We can't physically see the pains that it's actually causing to us. Most people, when we think about abusive relationships, we specifically think about physical abuse. But actually, emotional abusive relationships can be just as harmful as physical abuse. Just as harmful. So keep that in mind. The third one is threats. They threaten to hit you. They threaten to take away the money. They threaten to do, you know, bodily harm to the children. They threaten to kill you. They, they, they use a lot of threats. And again, the threat could be we're breaking up. They use a lot of threats to keep you in control and under their control. Threatening behavior, something to watch out for. Another thing to watch out for is property damage. So maybe they have never hit you like the physical abuse, but they are punching holes in the wall. They throwing dishes around. They, you know, slamming doors all the time, breaking them off the hinges. They just going all, all the way ham in the worst way. Again, has never touched you physically but this can absolutely escalate real quick and you don't want to be a part of that so property damage is something to watch out for the next thing to think about is alienation they start to 
slowly but surely pull you away from your friends and family. And they're not necessarily telling you that you need to walk away from them. But what they're actually doing is mind effing you. So what they're doing is saying, I don't like that family member. I don't like that cousin. I don't like that sibling. I don't like your best friend. I don't like your new friend. Any person that you bring around or talk about or want to hang out with, Anybody other than that sucker, they got something to say about it. And so because you want the relationship to work, you absolutely want to please your partner, you start to slowly but surely pull away from your friends, pull away from your family. Again, it's not something that your partner is asking you to do outwardly. But what they are doing secretly, for the most part, because abusers usually know when they're abusing you. They start to keep you away from the very people that would actually help you get back your voice and take back over control of your life. And so what they're slowly but surely doing, or, or your, your spouse, male or female, what they're doing is they're slowly but surely telling you all of this stuff that they don't like about um, your cousin, your mom, your dad, whatever, whoever it is. And rest assured... This is not something that they're casually saying or, or um, you know, bringing up every once in a while. No, it's every single person. They found something that is wrong with that person. And they don't want you to hang around that person for whatever reason. It really doesn't matter. But just note, the point here for this particular one with alienation is he has, he has, or she has something to say about every person that you want to hang around with when it is not him or is not her. That's when they have an issue. It's everybody. The next thing to think about is excessive gift giving. And now this one really happens when there was an issue. The bad behavior was showing. The, the, the actual threats of some kind or whatever it is that they had done to you Maybe they said something to you, right, that ticked you off or made you shut down, make you like started to ignore them or something. Maybe you're in another room not paying them any attention and that is not necessarily well, like the usual of you guys' relationship. And then all of a sudden, guess what? Here comes a small little trinket. And then that, that didn't work on you. And maybe some roses are coming. And then that didn't work on you. But slowly but surely, they're breaking you down because they're bringing all the gifts to you. And what they're trying to do is to get you to come back on their side once again. They're trying to get you back on their team. Real quick. And they're also trying to show you that you will be dependent on them for the love, for the support. You're only going to be dependent on them, which is where, again, the alienation comes in. You, you don't need anybody's help. You don't need anybody else's, like, approval or, you know, um, encouragement. Only mine. Not realizing that they are taking you down the rabbit hole. And, and there is some guilt and shame to this as well because you're like, wait a minute, what just happened? Like... How did I get in this situation? Like, who is this person? Like, this is not the person that I got with. How did I end up here? So there's that guilt and that shame that comes along with being in an abusive relationship. Specifically emotional, uh, er um, specifically an emotional abusive relationship because, which brings me to the next point, you start to feel crazy. You start to feel crazy and you start to like, question everything that is happening and because you're starting to get alienated from everybody you're listening to this only person's point of view whether male or female your partner your spouse you're listening to their point of view and you're like okay well maybe if I wouldn't have did and then he wouldn't have did or maybe if I wouldn't have said that then she wouldn't have said that and so they start to make you feel like you're crazy. And then if you do muster up the strength to confront them, to ask them about this behavior, they deny the facts. 
and they keep you like, okay, well, well, maybe. And so consistently you are questioning your thoughts. You're questioning, am I the one that's bringing this on myself or like, What's what's going on? Like, so there's all of this questions that you get going up there, which turns into, am I crazy? Like, am I making this up? Is it just me? Like, where's all of this stuff coming from? And then again, when you try to um, confront said person, they deny the facts or, you know, they try to downplay it. Like, girl, you know, I ain't mean that. Or, boy, you know, I ain't mean that. Like, you know, I just get a little crazy when, when you do X, Y, and Z. So they don't so they don't even take the responsibility for their actions and the things that they said. They tried to flip the script and blame it right back on you. Making you think, well, damn, maybe I am crazy. Or if I wouldn't have did XYZ, I wouldn't have got. He wouldn't have said. Maybe I would have got a little bit more hugs. Well, you know what? I actually don't like my cousin either. Now that he brought that up. Yeah, she be doing too much crazy making you think that you're crazy but you're not you're not crazy another thing to think about is he or she will control all of the resources and specifically resources in this sense I'm going to talk about money because maybe you guys live together and you're the stay-at-home person for whatever reason You know, maybe you have children, maybe you don't. Maybe, you know, you have an illness, whatever it is. You're the stay-at-home person, right? And so you need $20 to get some products, some male products, some feminine products, right? Or you need some gas money. Or you just want some chips that he or she didn't bring home, right? And so you have to go to them and ask them for this minuscule amount of money. And they like, what you need that for? Nah, nah, you don't need that. You don't need that. And so basically they acting like your mama or they acting like your daddy. And you like, I mean, I thought we was a team. I thought that, you know, I was the stay at home person and you was going to take home. You was going to take care of everything. Me included in that everything. And I ha- if I have to ask you for my allowance and now you can't give it to me for whatever reason. It's mainly because you just being a jerk and because you can I got to rethink some things. So maybe they're controlling all of the resources and they're doing it because they don't think that you are going to be smart enough to figure out what they're doing. They're also doing it because they want you to be completely dependent on them. They want to be like your like your God. They want to be like your God and they want to keep you in the mindset of nobody else is going to treat me as good as whoever. If I go find another guy or if I try to leave, I'm not going to find nobody else as good as him. If I try to leave, she going to end up with somebody else. Like, so basically they mind fucking you. They trying to keep you in that state of mind because they want the control. They want you to be dependent on them. And a way to do that is to control the resources for sure. The ninth thing to think about is that they are irrationally jealous. Jealous of every person that you talked about. Okay, so I talked about how they alienate you from the family and friends. This is where they become irrationally jealous that you want to hang out with anybody else but them. Or they start to give you a guilt trip about wanting to hang out with somebody else other than them. You know, you trying to leave out the door and do, you know, go wherever. Hey, baby, I'm about to go hang out with whoever. And John is like, I mean, I thought I told you I ain't like such and such. Or you want to go hang out with them? I mean, they ain't even no good. Or, you know, they, they, they start messing with your mind again. They start messing with your mind again. Before you know it, you have sat down your purse or put up your car keys. And now you're sitting on the couch right next to them. Not knowing that's what they wanted the entire time. Not necessarily you sitting on the couch next to them. No, they wanted you to not leave. They wanted you to get and feel the guilt that they are putting on you about wanting to hang out with somebody else other than them. And that it does not matter who that person is that you want to hang out with. They will find a way 
or and a reason to get jealous about any person that you want to hang out with other than them. Doesn't matter. The 10th thing to consider, maybe you are in an emotional abusive relationship, is if you have a person who out in public, they are cool, calm, and collective, laughing and joking with everybody. Every stranger out there, they can strike up a conversation and they look like Mr. Wonderful or she looks like Mr. Wonderful, right? But then when you get behind closed doors, they attack you about any and everything, especially if you're asking them a question about something and they don't feel like you are being, being their cheerleader. They start to attack you. Again, not physically, but the this tongue, this tongue, it start making you think that you're crazy, or they want you to physically cower down to them because they're stealing all of your self-esteem. They're taking it all away from you, taking away from your confidence. They're just they're 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 actually sucking the life out of you. Now. Doing one or two of these things, sometimes I wouldn't necessarily call emotional abusive behavior because sometimes we all just get a little crazy with our tongue. But this right here is something if they are doing on a consistent basis, maybe one, two, three, four things, maybe all 10 things. Maybe it's something else that I didn't even mention here. But you feel like you have to change your behavior. So their behavior could change. It's basically how they make you feel when they say these things. If you don't think that it's funny, and especially you have addressed it with him, if you have addressed it with her and they're still doing these things and you feel bad about it, it's abusive behavior. Now, if you are in a situation and you are looking to get out, I will absolutely have the 1-800 number at the end of this video. If you know somebody who is in a situation like this and they don't know how to get out, they are absolutely ready to get out and they don't know how to get out, give them the number. Share this video with them. And if you know somebody else who you can see that is going through this behavior, that is being emotionally abused, maybe they don't know it at all, share this video with them. Because we all deserve to be happy. We all deserve to be respected. And we do not deserve to be in an abusive situation because we have the power to make the choice. Call the number, get out. There is someone there who can absolutely help you get out of your situation securely. And especially if you have children, there are steps to take. If you're fearful of your life, don't just walk away. Take the steps, call the number, figure out what you need to do so you can get out safely.